Welcome back, Dromler Nation. I'm your host, Willie Mack. I'll be covering for Keem this week, and the internet is in free fall. Deji is being exposed by his boxing coach for being too lazy. The Island Boys are being called out by the Nafadi brothers. They've uploaded more of their training footage, and it is so awful. We get a confirmed date for Jake Paul's next fight, and Sam Hyde has accepted a fight against Boogie. <laughs> oh my god, I can't wait. But first, Elon Musk is back in the news. We all know he bought Twitter for $44 billion. Well, he's been smack-talking his new company, tweeting, Truth Social is currently beating Twitter and TikTok on the Apple Store. Truth Social being Donald Trump's new alternative to Twitter. He follows this up with Truth Social, terrible name, exists because Twitter censored free speech. This is coming after Twitter had an all-hands-on-deck company meeting that was leaked, where they answered some questions employees had about the buyout. And man, some of the questions and concerns they had just seemed so childish. Like, how will this impact our diversity inclusion goals? As if Elon's gonna go in there and just fire all the minorities? Or this question asking, with no board in place, who will keep Elon accountable and how? Out Outside of the media, probably no one. I mean, he's your boss, right? He just owns the company. I don't even understand what they're asking. Elon, however, might have given us some insight to his next business venture when he tweeted, next time buying Coca-Cola and putting the cocaine back in it. Then he added Coca-Cola saying, oh, hi, lol. This became the second most liked tweet of all time, passing both President Barack Obama and Joe Biden. In gaming news, Modern Warfare 2 is back. It was announced by Infinity Ward. This is huge news for the internet. An entire generation was raised in these lobbies. <laughs> <laughs> I want to show this so bad, but YouTube would blacklist me for it. I swear the internet was more fun back then, but either way, the game's apparently sick. NFL player Ahmad Gardner got a chance to play it, posting to his Instagram, I was the first person to see the new COD and it's fire. Next in the world of boxing, Sam Hyde's recently been signed to Happy Punch. He's been trying to get in the ring with Hassan Piker, iDubbbz, Joe Rogan. With nobody accepting his challenge, he started posting Twitter polls of people he's down to fight. Some notable names were Dr. Disrespect, Anthony Fantano, Vosh, Ethan Klein, plus another guy. The Island Boys, and Idubs and Anissa at the same time. Out of all the people he pulled, Boogie was the one who responded. Keem tweeted, just got off the phone with Boogie and he's serious about boxing Sam Hyde. Sam said, I'm told Boogie will fight me. I think this is screwed up and you should be ashamed of yourself, but I honor the people. He pulled it with 71% of people saying he should fight him. Boogie posted, just got off the phone with Keemstar and the man is a motivator. Gonna find a boxing gym nearby me and give it a visit. We'll film this too for you guys. Who knows? Maybe this could actually be a thing. Out of all the people listed, all of these creators on these polls. Boogie's the one to accept Sam's challenge. You should all be ashamed of yourself. Earlier this week, we showed footage of the Island Boys training. It's the most unathletic thing I've ever seen. Well, the Nafadi brothers took some notice and it seems like they want in. What does it say? Would you rather win $1 million or fight Island Boys? Hmm. Well, the Island Boys posted even more training footage and it's somehow worse. His shoe flies off like halfway through. Three. Yay. Oh. Oh. Yay. Oh. Come on, man. Play Come on. Come on. Down, 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 down. Come on. Yeah. There is no shot they get in the ring with somebody. They're trolling more than Sam Hyde. Next, we got Deji. Deji hasn't exactly had the greatest boxing career. He's sitting at 0-3. Well, his boxing coach this week has decided to come out and expose him. He talks about how Deji never took his training seriously. It was quite tough because he had quite a lot of commitments outside of boxing, which is understandable, but when you have a fight coming on, you need to be fully committed, in my opinion. Camp really didn't get going. I tried explaining to him that with boxing, you've got to take it seriously. His life is in my hands as a coach. Like, I must put him through the full paces. It didn't seem like it was paying off. After that, there was points where I did say to him that Deji, if it carries on this way, then I don't, I will not be your coach. Dude, if your own coach is threatening to quit because you aren't putting in enough effort, that should be a wake up call. But apparently nothing changed. Leading up to the week, where he moved camp. It was probably the toughest week for me because being away from home in the evenings, every evening, coming home late and eating with family was kind of difficult because I'd be getting home sometimes 12 o'clock and also sometimes waiting up till late to not know that he might not be turning up. That became an issue as well. There was times where, you know, I'd be waiting at home um, ready to about, about to leave and, you know, that you may cancel on me. 30 minutes, 
before training which did become difficult at times because number one I want him to train number one I wanted him to be fit and strong and ready for the fight and number two is just like for me I'm waiting at home I'm giving that time to someone I find it slightly disrespectful to be totally honest to do that to someone when Happy Punch posted this story Deji's previous trainer Tommy sarcastically replied oh really that doesn't sound like Deji at all what did I tell you at the end of the day when it comes to YouTube boxing I don't care if these guys win or lose I'm here for the memes but people are paying their hard-earned money to see these guys put on their best performance and Deji promoted it as such yeah I've just been training 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 there was times where you know I'd be waiting at home um, ready to about, about to leave and you know Deji may cancel on me 30 minutes before training. Bruh, I wish Deji would just give it his all or quit. I'm sick of seeing these inspirational speeches about not giving up when he never put in the work in the first place. No matter how many times you get beat down, you can still pick yourself up. Wow, real inspiring. Jake Paul's next boxing match seems to have been leaked. Now we knew Jake Paul was going to fight in August, but we never had an exact date. And with the Showtime contract being up, we didn't know who was going to host the event. This is coming from his trainer who posted a picture of Jake Paul boxing with the caption, big things in 2022, August 13th, with days in boxing in the tags. His trainer quickly edited the post, removing days in boxing from the tags and the August 13th date. The Dromler team started doing some digging around this story and they ended up finding an interview with days in's Eddie Hearn. Now that his deal with Showtime is up. Any chance of luring him back into matchroom and zone? I don't know. You know, I don't want to do YouTube boxing anymore. But Jake's kind of not YouTube boxing anymore. You know, he's got his own business, his own promotional company. He's very smart. Uh, if we can help in any way, um, I would always enjoy being involved in a Jake Paul fight, in a, in a real fight, not a YouTube fight, because. He's a boxer now. This confirms that this leak might not just be a mistake. The fight is most likely happening the 13th of August. We got some more news on Jake Paul. A couple months ago, we reported on him being in a thruple. Yes, a three-way relationship. Both the girls ended up doing an interview with a channel named Duno's World. You guys smashed Jake Paul. Yes. <laughs> We slid yeah. in my Instagram DMs okay, and Instagram he was basically DM. like, I want you to come out to Puerto Rico, which is where he lives. And I was like, okay, I'm down, but only if I can bring my best friend, Rochelle. Legend. <laughs> word for word, he goes, how do you guys feel about a thruple? We're like, let's what? run it, baby. <laughs> so we both have Jakey P <laughs> on the same spot. <laughs> oh my God. And then he got uh, Skylar Rara and a heart on his leg. We were on like a really tight leash. There, there was one moment where on he, a tight leash. This is a one week relationship. He was already like. It was like a full blown like three way thruple. Like he was calling his family, telling him about it. That like we were all in a relationship. So get the f out. No joke. From like, you guys hopped on Facetime with his mom. My man's got permanent tattoos from girls he's known for a week. Can I see the tattoos? Yeah. Yes, so we yes. both have Jakey P <laughs> on the same spot. <laughs> Oh my god! And he got uh, Skylar Rara and a heart on his leg. Which he has since covered up. He covered because it he up? he got back with his ex. He covered oh, yeah, 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 yeah. up. Cover that he up. Cover he that covered that up. Covered that up so fast. And finally, Twitch is making some changes to their website. Some good, some really bad. Bloomberg reported that Twitch seeks to revamp creator pay with a focus on profit. Some of the changes discussed include incentives for more ads, the revenue split going from 70% in favor of creators down to 50, a new tier system, no more exclusivity, and these changes, although not set in stone, could come into play as early as this summer. A lot of streamers are rightfully upset with these changes. Nadeshot tweeted, curious to see if those who sign exclusivity deals with minimum guarantees will speak out about this, or if this will go with little pushback from the top 0.01% of Twitch streamers. I love Twitch, but beyond no more exclusivity, I think this is a terrible decision. Courage posted, obviously none of this is confirmed. It's all through sources, but these changes would be worse for streamers. These changes would be worse for viewers. I don't see how this ever goes through. Amongst all this bad publicity for Twitch, the head of YouTube gaming dropped a bomb. Shen tweeted, lots coming to YouTube gaming in the next two weeks. Also, PSA that YouTube's rev share across fan funding features remains a 70-30 split, and her partner program doesn't include any form of content exclusive. I'm telling you, Twitch is going to be in serious trouble. They banned Aiden Ross, Destiny, Speed, and for two out of three of them, they didn't even cite a reason. Speed is like the biggest streamer in the world right now. People are going to abandon Twitch if they don't get their act together. Now, on a semi-related note, Aiden Ross's girlfriend, Pammy, reacted to some claims he made about their love life. Mm -hmm. What's foreplay mean? Oh my, this guy makes He's his 20. girlfriend come every time he doesn't even know what foreplay no, is. No, but, but listen, like on God, like on everything I love, like on my Twitch career, like she's <laughs> when I'm coming. Like every time, I'm not even lying. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.
That'll be all for today, Drama Alert Nation. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to Drama Alert, and hit that notification bell, because we will be updating you on all these stories and more as they develop. Till next time.